We've already seen how to use find file, which is control X, control F. But find file is a strange name for this command because we're the ones who have to do the finding, not Emacs. It really should be open file. So what if we don't know where the file that we want is located, but we know something about its name? Instead of find file, we can use the command find dirt which runs find from some directory, we'll just use the home directory, and then we give it arguments like a case insensitive name match for, let's say, anything with Emacs in it. Emacs displays the result in a dirt buffer, which we've seen in a previous video already. But this doesn't seem quite satisfying. For one, we need to know the syntax of the find command, which even after using Unix for 15 years, I still am a bit unsure of, aside from the differences between Linux and BSD systems. The other problem is that find is always going to be a little bit slow since it needs to search through the entire file system. An alternative is to use locate. And if your system has the locate command, which is installed and maintained by default on most Linux systems, uh, BSD, as well as OS X, and can be installed for Windows as well, the locate command will use a locate database. So if we locate Emacs, we get matches a lot faster, but the disadvantage to this is that we get matches in the entire file system, not just underneath the directory that we want. One way to work around this with existing tools is to use Control u before meta x locate. And locate will ask us how to run locate. This is a pretty common pattern for Control u when you prefix a command with control U, it usually unlocks a more detailed or customizable mode for running a command. In this case, we can locate Emacs like normal, but also grep for our home directory as well to filter the results. Another possible option is to use a separate locate database, which you can specify with dash D. And this could work well in cases where you have a large project and you maintain a separate locate database for it. And if you were always using this alternate database, you could customize. Let's search for locate, expand this frame, and change the locate F codes file to change it from the default path to look for the locate database. Now, find and locate aren't the only way to find files on the file system. As with most things in Emacs, there are packages that can hook into other systems like Google Desktop if you happen to have them installed. Okay, so we've seen a couple ways to find a file based on its file name, but what about based on its contents? Let's look at the command rgrep, which stands for recursive grep. The first thing it asks for is the string to search for. We'll just use Emacs. And then for the type of files, this here is a regular expression, and we'll just search in all files. And then for the directory, let's give it our home directory. And with that, our grep is off. You can see the command that it's running here, which is excluding a number of files and paths already such as common source code repository directories and common temporary or transitory files. Also notice that grep is going to take quite a while and it's still running here. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill the grep buffer and Emacs will ask me to also kill the running process. Say we wanted to search in a directory, but not all of its subdirectories like that search, which was going to take a while to complete. Instead of rgrep, we can use lgrep. So let's try the same search in all files in the home directory. And now this time, the grep has already finished. If the default list of excluded files and directories isn't what you want, 
you can customize group for grep and then find the ignored directories and the ignored files options. For example, if we were on an OS 10 system, we may not want to search through DS store directories. In my workflow, it's common for me to run a lot of greps. So say that now I want to search for anything with display. So we'll grep for display in all files in the home directory. Notice now, though, that our previous grep results were wiped out. There's only one grep buffer. So if you want to reference previous grep results or build up a number of grep result buffers, there's an extension for that. Let's list packages. And then search for and install grep a lot. Now that grep a lot is installed, it hasn't quite started working yet. If we run another grep, let's say for the previous results for Emacs, it still wipes out the latest search in the grep buffer. Let's try looking in customize for grep a lot. And there are no results, not even for lot. We just get slots. So grep a lot is an example of a simple extension that hasn't bothered with hooking into the customization system. Fortunately, Emacs extensions have a tradition of including documentation inside of the source for how to use it. So let's use recursive grep to search for grep a lot in all files inside of our .emacsd directory, which you might recall is where Elpa installs extensions. And here we have in Elpa Grepalot, grepalot.el. And el files are Emacs Lisp files. So let's look through the comments. And there is a note on installation here. The first step we can ignore because Elpa manages compiling files and adding them to the load path. It's the second step that we want to use. We want to pull in Grepalot with require and set it up. So let's copy this with meta w. Open up our .emacs file. And then after package initialize, paste those couple lines in and save the file. Rather than restarting Emacs, we can just evaluate these lines by moving to the end of the line and pressing Control x Control e Let's do the same for this line. We could have also created a selection and then used meta x eval region. So now presumably grepalot is set up so that when we switch to our grep buffer and run another grep, such as emacs in the home directory, we now have two grep buffer results. And we can do the same as many times as we want. Notice that grep is suggesting defaults based on what's underneath the cursor when we run grep. So let's search again for display inside of all files in our home directory. And now we have three different grep buffers to look at. There are more ways to find files quickly inside of Emacs, but these are just the ones that come built into Emacs. In case it wasn't clear in earlier sections of the video, these underlined lines here act as hyperlinks into the files, and you can just move the cursor to them and press return. And notice that we're on line 71 here in the buffer that we just opened, which corresponds to the line number here in the grep result. One other customization I'll point out is that you can change the actual grep command used as well, which can come in handy if you need to do multi-line greps, which grep by default can handle, but commands like PCRE grep can. I hope this was useful for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.